Hello and welcome back to Rolling the Robsons where we're all about caravan time as family time and caravan time as freedom. Today we're just going to give you a quick tour of our brand new, well new to us, um, Bailey Palermo 2017 model and really really briefly to show you some things that we like about the van and why we actually went for this van over other caravans that were on the market at the time. And actually I think if you have a family and you've got a bigger tow car and you can tow this or you can even get a GT70 which is a bit lighter then this I think is a really really good layout and a really well put together van by Billy and it's quite a shame that they still don't do it. Hopefully you get some value from this so hit the like button and let's go around the caravan and why we chose it. So the caravan is currently partly in winter mode I've just shut some of the cupboards because they were all uh, open but it is kind of getting ready for winter mode so one of the things we've got like uh, that some of the sprites didn't have is it's got a simple window in the door and that just lets a little bit more light in. Coming round to the front section, we really like the nice light oak and a nice little bit of gloss on the bottom there. Lovely handles. We've got the amazing Bailey front windows so that we've liked for quite a while. Again, a couple more cupboards along here. It also has, which I know can be a love-hate thing, it also has the Bailey Dream Sleep system, which I no longer do, so maybe there's a reason for that. But that worked out really well the other day and it made it much easier to set up the front seats than we used to have. Plenty of space there to put things on the front of the caravan as well. Coming around a second, we've obviously got the kitchen. The kitchen for us is the first time it's ever been the far side, normally it's on the near side for us. Nice big flap, plenty of space there on the worktop. Um, it has a three burner gas hob, which I'll just show you for a second. And electric plate, which is quite useful for you at a gas. If you haven't seen the video, I'll put a link um, up above in a little bit. Obviously, separate oven and grill which again is a good thing for us with having five of us in the van plenty of space and storage here again we've got another three cupboards above here for storage um, along here we've obviously got the microwave and another cupboard and we've got one of the things that we really wanted out of this caravan which was the incredibly big fridge freezer i'll just quickly show you in there so that is significantly bigger than the old one. A nice big freezer compartment there. So fingers crossed if we get to go to fan, so it'll work okay out there. Maybe we'll do a couple of mods for a fan. Um, other things we really like is the fact that we've got this mid table here. It's to give you plenty of space in the middle here to walk around with something that we always used to have an issue with, with the 586 and one of the reasons we got rid of it. I'm going to use this cupboard here for our shoes because it's just inside the door. Also, one of the things we like about the Palermo is lots of natural light. The windows are all a really good size as well. Some of the sprites that we looked at were lovely caravans, but the windows had made them quite small. I know they're probably kind of cost saving. Maisie's going to sleep here, our oldest, and there's a space for her there. Again, really good big window. Got a couple of bunks. Sorry, that's my coat there. One of the things we really like is that the big window here in the bottom bunk, it kind of stops it being um, too secluded or too dark in there. And there's plenty of space for the girl to play in there during the day. Um, but there's lots and lots of natural light come here. Again, we've got three roof lights. Again, something that we looked at and the sprites and the standard size sprites that only had two. And it just felt a little bit darker. Obviously, come along, like we said here in the bathroom. Uh, we obviously have a toilet, uh, a wash basin, which hopefully a uh, caravan vlogger will like because it's not a, a salad bowl one. A nice little window to do your Andrew Ditton impressions if you want. Hello. Uh, and then we've got the fully lined shower. And again, the reason we went for bunks over a fixed bed at the moment is there was always a compromise in this area. Um, and then this gives us the space that if we want to still use the facilities in the van, we can. But if we want to use the ones out, we can also. And also if um, if for COVID reasons, the facilities are shut, it means we can still use that. Again, nice big wardrobe, which is at the back here, which is different from us. So after here, we're getting on with that. And you can see we've just took that off there to let some air through and a bit of ventilation, but that's also used as a washing basket. So I don't know, I just think that the van, even though it is 7 foot 4 instead of 7 foot 5 that the um, 586 was, it just feels really big and lots of space here on that big twin axle. Now a lot of people will say, well you could have got a fixed bed like the Super FB or the Turin FB and have that big bathroom. And you'd be right, that is totally true. But we didn't want to spend the best part of 25 or £23,000 because by doing that, what we're excluding is the opportunity to experience sort of things more on the whim because we'd have a lot of overheads for paying with the van. And I'd also be very conscious of damaging it. Yes, it's a family van. It's going to get damaged inside. The children will scratch things, hopefully with the GRP outside, which is one of the things that we chose. That'll be less of an issue. It also means that without being eight foot, it just feels a little bit less scary. This is my first twin that we're going to keep. And that means that we can get used to a twin first, get used to the whole ins and outs of towing a twin and getting it set up on a pitch. And then maybe later on, yeah, maybe we look at an eight foot van 
But I do think up here in the northeast, or particularly Northumberland, there are a lot of narrow lanes, and you don't really want to be spending a lot of time going through those because, yes, you would fit with somebody coming the other way, but sometimes it's really, really tight, and you don't want to paint like, scraping your van off the walls. In the top left will be a set of videos that YouTube will pick for you. Same in the bottom right. Please remember to subscribe to the video and hopefully got some value to have a look around this van and some of the reasons we picked for it by hitting the like button. And please leave a comment. You know, would you have bought this van or would you have went for a fixed bed? And if you have, which one did you go for with your family? Because it's always really good to get comments from people about why they did things because it will help all of us move on the conversation about fixed bed versus bunk bed. So that was just a really quick tour of our van. We will go in more depth and give you a bigger tour of the van and more reasons why we chose this van over the other fixed bed, like we said. So thanks for watching all caravan, motorhoming and camping people.